that it will engulf the orbit of Mercury and Venus and come very close to Earth. Supernova explosions are one of the most beautiful phenomena in space. A typical supernova would produce a light so bright that it could outshine its entire galaxy. But as fascinating as this space phenomenon may be, we rarely get to witness it in our part of the cosmos. However, new data from scientists has revealed that a massive supernova is set to happen in our galaxy within the next 100 years. When will this supernova explosion occur and what star will be responsible? Also, what effects will this event have on our planet? Join us in this video as we talk about this soon coming supernova explosion set to take the night sky all over the world. A supernova is defined in cosmology as a powerful and luminous explosion of a star in space. It occurs when the pressure drops greatly in a massive star and it can no longer bear its weight, so it collapses in on itself, producing a massive explosion. Supernovas play a major role in distributing elements throughout the universe. You see, various elements are formed in a dying star, which we'll mention later, and a supernova is the ideal avenue by which the star releases these elements. These elements then travel across the cosmos to form new stars and planets. Scientists even believe most of the elements we find here on Earth were originally formed inside the core of stars. Supernovas are a rare occurrence. They only happen when a star has reached its final evolutionary stages and then collapses on itself, giving off a giant explosion in space. It has been quite a while since a supernova was observed in our galaxy. The last known event was way back in 1604, when the Kepler star exploded. This supernova explosion was so visible that people on Earth could see it with the naked eye. Since then, no Milky Way supernova experience has been recorded, though scientists have observed supernovas in other galaxies. Not all supernovas are from dying stars exploding, some are from white dwarfs. A white dwarf is the remnant of stellar cores. These extremely dense stellar bodies do not qualify to be called stars, and they form supernovas when they steal matter from a companion star. When white dwarfs steal matter, nuclear fission is reignited within their core. Nuclear fission in this case is called runaway nuclear fission because it happens at an accelerated rate. White dwarf and dying star supernovas can produce an extreme shock wave, releasing numerous solar masses of materials into the surrounding medium at the speed of light. The expanding shock waves from supernovas can trigger the creation of new stars. In fact, scientists believe this is how nearly all the stars we see in galaxies today were formed. If a supernova were to occur anywhere outside our galaxy, a telescope would easily see it. However, there are a couple of stars within our galaxy that could light up our night sky if they exploded. One of the most notable ones is Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse is one of the oldest and brightest stars in our night sky. It's about 8 million years old and forms part of the constellation Orion, one of the most famous constellations visible all over the world. Orion constellation was born out of Greek mythology, and it depicts a hunter wielding a sword and a shield. Betelgeuse can be spotted on the right shoulder of Orion, which is why it is nicknamed the Alpha Orionis. For a long time, it has intrigued astronomers and astrophysicists. At first, its significant brightness and unique color attracted researchers to it. The first man to notice its brightness variations was Sir John Herschel in 1836. By 1849, the variations began to increase in amplitude, and consequently, it became the brightest star in the Northern Hemisphere. The surface temperature of this star is about 3,100 degrees Kelvin, and only about 13% of its radiant energy is transmitted to us as visible light. Betelgeuse has always been an orange or reddish star, and you would hardly find such stars in our Earth's sky. Most of the stars in our sky give off blue light, whereas the Betelgeuse gives off an orange light. Scientists found that this intriguing feature was due to the star's old age. The phenomenal size of Betelgeuse was another feature to confirm its old age. Betelgeuse has a radius of about 626 million kilometers and weighs about 11 times the mass of our sun. Scientists believe Betelgeuse wasn't always this big, but it started expanding as it grew older. Typically, the closer a star is to its death, the bigger it'll become. Recent observations have shown that Betelgeuse's radius has expanded by an additional 9% since 2019. But you see, the study of Betelgeuse became all the more intriguing when scientists discovered it was pulsating. In other words, 
Betelgeuse was expanding and reducing in size periodically. Betelgeuse is very lumpy on the surface and typically resembles a bubbling ball of plasma. Occasionally, huge plumes of hot plasma burst from its surface into the surrounding space. Sometimes, these outbursts of plasma make the star appear momentarily dim. This pulsation was studied for a long time, and it was discovered that it happened in regular cycles of 185, 230, 420, and 2200 days. Astronomers noticed that Betelgeuse would lighten up every 400 days, and then its brightness would reduce to about half its maximum degree before it brightened again. The pulsations and distinct changes in brightness were clear indicators that Betelgeuse wasn't going to live long. Initially, scientists had calculated that the star might live for another 100,000 years or so. But some unexpected behaviors in recent times confused scientists and upended their calculations. First, the 400-day oscillation cycles changed to 200-day cycles. Next was the great dimming of 2019 and 2020, where Betelgeuse suddenly became fainter than we had ever seen, losing about 37% of its usual brightness. Through thorough investigations, scientists discovered that the dimming was caused by a mini-explosion of Betelgeuse's top layer. The star had blown up its top layer, releasing a cloud of dust that dimmed the light it was emitting. Images of the star at that time showed that half of it was missing. After this event, Betelgeuse continued to dim further until 2023, when it suddenly became bright again, sparking new controversies. Betelgeuse is now 50% brighter than usual, and some astronomers initially wondered whether this was the final milestone before the explosion. But then, they discovered that this brightening was because the dust covering the star and making it appear dim had now lifted, allowing light to pass for us to see. Besides, in massive stars like these, supernovas are triggered in the cores, not on the surface. Brightness variation in stars is always a surface phenomenon and doesn't necessarily represent what's happening in the core. However, a new study has revealed that Betelgeuse is dying much faster than we thought, and it may explode a lot sooner than we predicted. It is a fact that Betelgeuse will one day become a giant supernova, but contrary to what we thought, it appears that we will witness this spectacular event within the next 100 years. You see, before now, astronomers were using the cosmic timeline to predict how soon this star would blow up, so it seemed like we'd all be dead by the time this event happened. But now, a new team of scientists, led by Dr. Hideyuki Seo of Tohoku University, have published a paper that just makes you wonder if this star will blow up in the next few decades. This new team of scientists has disclosed that Betelgeuse's unusual brightening patterns are a clear indicator that it is nearing the end of the carbon-burning stage of its life. Since this phase is already close to its end, it could be completed in the next few decades, and a supernova will occur right before our eyes. You see, when stars burn, they first do so by fusing hydrogen atoms to form helium. This reaction occurs inside the core for most of a star's lifespan. As time goes on, after millions of years, the stars run a pit of hydrogen and begin to convert helium to carbon inside the cores. Furthermore, carbon burning occurs within the star as carbon is converted to neon, sodium, and magnesium. This carbon burning stage is the critical stage and once it is complete, the star will collapse on itself and become a supernova. In other words, supernova explosions only happen after a star has run out of carbon and several rounds of elements like neon, oxygen, and silicon have fused. In their recent paper, Dr. Hideyuki Sayo and his team members stated that Betelgeuse has been burning carbon for centuries and it's starting to run out. Their paper suggests that the carbon burning phase of the Betelgeuse is just a few decades from completion. Next, the star will react further, filling its core with iron, before it explodes. Now, you may be wondering how Sayo and his team reached this conclusion. Well, the team decided to consider the two 200-day cycles as the primary pulsation period. Scientists have always used the 400-day cycle period as the basis for their predictions and assumed the other cycles to be random overtones. The 2,200 days have never truly been considered part of the oscillation cycle. However, Sayo and his team believe that the two 200-day cycle is the main one, and all the others are overtones. It's important to note that scientists use these overtones to determine just how large the Betelgeuse is. Remember, no one has actually seen this star except through the James Webb and Hubble telescopes. 
Using the 400-day cycle as a basis, scientists concluded that Betelgeuse was a supergiant that could fill up our solar system, swallowing the entire space from the Sun to Jupiter. If the two 200-day cycle is the actual base pulsation cycle, as Seo and his team believe, it means that the Betelgeuse is much bigger than we think. In line with this, the red giant would also be far older than we've been predicting all this while. Scientists also pointed out that we may have been getting Betelgeuse's timing wrong because we assume the last successive phases will follow the same cosmic timescale as the first, but as Dr. Sayo and his team pointed out, every successive phase in the death cycle of a star is shorter than the former. And so, while the helium burning phase may have taken hundreds of thousands of years, the carbon burning phase may only take a thousand years or even a century. Sayo and his team used computer simulations to observe the evolution of stars from birth to death and determine the pulsations that accompany each stage. They realized that the 2200 to 200 day cycles are typical breathing patterns for a star in its final stages of carbon burning. In other words, Betelgeuse has been breathing all this while, and soon it will take its final breath. Their simulations also showed that it takes only a few decades for a supernova to occur after this breathing. The team, however, admitted that fixing a definite date for the star's explosion is hard because no one can examine the star's core to see how much carbon is left in it. This is why the team could only estimate that Betelgeuse may explode in the next 100 to 1,000 years. One thing that strongly supports Dr. Sayo's claim of Betelgeuse exploding soon is the rapid color change of the Betelgeuse over the years. You see, ancient manuscripts have always referred to this star as yellowish, just like the color of our sun. However, astronomers started referring to the star as a red giant over the last few centuries. So how did its color change so fast? The only explanation is that it's dying much faster than most stars. This ultra-fast evolution of Betelgeuse could also spell an accelerated supernova. Given that Betelgeuse is one of the brightest stars in the sky, you may be wondering just how bright it would be when it explodes. Well, typically, supernova explosions can be so bright that they reach absolute magnitude ratings of minus 19 and possess luminosity billions of times that of the sun. Most supernovas reach their maximum brightness 20 days after exploding. At peak brightness, they become brighter than the entire galaxy. Betelgeuse is located in the Milky Way so its explosion is guaranteed to outshine every other star in our galaxy, including our Sun. Several things make it difficult to calculate the brightness of Betelgeuse's explosion. As much as scientists have extensively studied this star, they still don't know its exact mass. Some papers argue it's 11 times that of our Sun, while others speculate it's about 19 times the mass of our Sun. Its exact distance also is another mystery. Many scientists believe it's about 600 light years away, while others predict it's 900, 1000 light years away. Issues like this make Betelgeuse quite unpredictable, so we can't say for sure how bright it'll be when it explodes. But scientists have run several models that suggest that when this red giant explodes, it'll outshine our moon and be visible even in broad daylight. We would have a bright red light in the daytime, just where Betelgeuse used to be. This prediction seems accurate given the sheer size of the Betelgeuse and the fact that it's already one of the brightest stars in our sky. So, for about two weeks to two months, the supernova would shine as bright as the new moon. In fact, scientists predict that at night, you could out off all the lights in a city and you would still be able to read a book with nothing but the light of the supernova. In the daytime, we would have two suns, one red, one yellow. Fascinating, right? After this, the star would slowly fade away over the course of 6 to 12 months. However, during this time, it would still be very visible during the daytime. It's estimated that Betelgeuse's supernova will disappear completely after 12 months. But wait, if Betelgeuse is located in our galaxy and will outshine everything within our Milky Way, what effects would we experience if it explodes? Well, there are a couple of things you need to understand first. The degree of effects we would feel would depend on how close we are to the supernova. Since Betelgeuse is estimated to be only 600 light years away, we would feel a few effects from its explosion. First, we'd notice something called neutrinos, which is a rain of harmless, massless particles. Another effect we'd feel here on Earth would be cosmic rays. Cosmic rays are high-energy particles that can move through space at the speed of light. 
Some of the cosmic rays noticed on Earth come from our Sun, but a major portion comes from outside our solar system and beyond our galaxy. These rays can penetrate our magnetic field. In fact, cosmic rays have been known to cause electronic problems in satellites orbiting space. Scientists have not been able to tell what stars are responsible for the interstellar cosmic waves we experience in our part of the cosmos, but it's been long suspected supernovae are responsible for these rays. Due to the massive explosions from these events, the cosmic waves of supernovas can travel far into distant galaxies and planets. And so, if a supernova were to happen in our own galaxy, we'd suffer immense impact from the cosmic rays. I bet you're wondering what damage these cosmic waves could cause. Well, they're a lot. Harmful rays from stellar objects like Betelgeuse can cause health complications in humans. Just so you know, the cosmic rays from our sun and other sources contribute to cancer cases worldwide. Humanity would have many more cancer cases if not for our magnetic field. Sadly, this magnetic field has been weakening recently. Betelgeuse is a star with heavy metals like sodium, magnesium, and neon. So there's no telling what kind of sicknesses its cosmic waves will cause to the human body. We could have cases of DNA mutation, radiation sickness, or nervous and circulatory system damage in humans. Add this to the radiation from our sun, and you know there will be trouble. The only salvation here would be if the cosmic rays expelled by Betelgeuse quickly dissipate after it explodes, so only a small portion of it reaches us on Earth. Betelgeuse could also create radioactive iron or iron-60. This substance is always formed when supernovas explode. Some traces of it have been found on the moon and in the Earth's seabed. These traces are believed to be remains from a supernova explosion about 3 million years ago. Scientists believe that the supernova responsible for these remains was much closer to the Earth than the Betelgeuse, about 300 light years away. And so, besides cosmic ray effects, we may not suffer much damage from the Betelgeuse supernova. But it would have been a different story if the red giant were closer to Earth than it is. Scientists estimate that supernovas within the range of 5 to 30 light years away from Earth could be devastating. The cosmic rays from these explosions could destroy the ozone layer and cause ultra-high radiation levels on Earth. The damage to humans, plants, animals, and the Earth's crust would be terrible, as it would be an extinction-level event. However, None of our nearby stars seems to be on the verge of exploding. In fact, there are no other nearby red giants in our galaxy besides the Betelgeuse. So how long do we wait to see this spectacular phenomenon? Well, no one knows, not even Dr. Sayo. But if everything the scientists predicted is right, Betelgeuse may explode within the next 100 years. However, there's no guarantee of this. Some other scientists believe that the star won't explode even in the next 1,000 years. Rather, its brightness will go back to normal. These scientists argue that if the Betelgeuse were to truly go supernova, it would have expelled a huge chunk of its initial material by now. This is what stars do when preparing to explode. However, Betelgeuse still has about 90% of its initial material intact. Sadly, there's no way to tell what's happening inside the star's core, so we can't know which of these two groups of scientists are right in their predictions. We just need to wait and let time reveal the truth. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, click on the video on your screen for more quality content like this one.